Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Good morning and welcome to Hope from the Hill. I am Anthony Michael Chandler and I'm so excited that you've joined us today. Don't you change your channel. God has a word for you today. Some say it was written uh, while David was a young man. Some say that this psalm was written as an old David. Some even say that this psalm was written after David had lost both his mother and his father. Most of us have heard about David, that once boldly courageous shepherd boy who killed a lion with, and a bear with his bare hands. David, Deacon Bullock, the youngest son of Jesse, who was one day just minding his business when a prophet made an unscheduled visit to his house because God told the prophet that one of Jesse's boys is going to be the next king of Israel. And unbeknownst to everyone in the house, David was the one picked out and anointed to be the next king. His older brothers had the look, they had the perfect height, but David had the right heart. And heart does matter to God because men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. David Deacon Willie Brown Sr. had the right heart. And his early life story teaches us that people who shine within don't need the spotlight. That means while others are bragging and lying about who they are and what they have, all you got to do is just be faithful. Because a fact of life is this, what God has for me, it is for me. You don't have to kiss up brown nose or bend over backwards for anybody. Just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. David was chosen to be the next king, but prior to the selection, you should know again that he was counted out. He was overlooked and he was underestimated right in the face of his own family who just recently, uh, who just happened to be uh, his family. And don't you know, friends, I've learned that sometimes uh, you will discover the haters in your own family. David, in his younger years, and as a matter of fact, all through his life, was counted out, often overlooked and underestimated. But friends, if I have learned, haven't learned anything else in 2018, I've learned that even when folk count you out, and even when you feel overlooked and underestimated and even un unappreciated, God has a way of showing himself mighty and showing himself strong. 
And he has a mighty good way, yes, a mighty good way of reintroducing you to the same people who counted you out, who overlooked you, and even underestimated you for you to boldly stand in their faces and scream, say something now. Do me a favor, wake up somebody next to you and say, let them say something now. Because doctors and naysayers and neighbors counted you out. Human resource, family and friends overlooked you. Co-workers, teachers and church members underestimated you. But now at the end of the year, you really should step out of this service, dial their phone numbers and say, say something now. Because you meant it for evil, but God made it work for my good. You thought I wasn't going to make it, but in March, I learned no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Somebody thought that that last chapter was the end of your story, but during the hot summer months of 2018, you took a page from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and remembered that the Lord has a way of showing up in hot and heated situations. Have I got a witness in church tonight? And I see some of you in church tonight, some of you already have your party clothes on, and I ain't hate knowing you. After all you've been through in 2018, you deserve to have yourself a good time tonight because you're just like the rest of us in 2018, you found yourself in some hot and heated situations. Am I talking to anybody in church tonight? Some hot and heated situations when you felt alone, some hot and heated situations when you were afraid, when you were angry, mad, and almost choked the hell out of somebody, some hot moments, sometimes annoyed and agitated when it was good for you to be alone. You didn't want to be bothered. Hot and heated moments when you didn't feel like praying, when you didn't feel like reading your Bible, when you didn't feel like coming to church days. When had you not forgotten to take your medicine, you would have walked on the job and told everybody where to go and how fast to get there. Somebody in this room had some hot moments when you didn't know how you were going to pay the bill. Some hot moments when the phone rang and you didn't want to answer. Somebody say some hot moments. Some hot moments when you heard some news that made you just want to run away. A moment when your spouse or that child almost made you catch a case. Who am I talking to? This year has had many highs, but is there anybody who can say, I also endured many, many lows? Somebody say, he preaching to me today. There were moments, Reverend Pate, when all of us were counted out, misunderstood, overlooked, underestimated, lied on them, talked about, cheated, and mistreated. But tonight I've come as a prophet of the Lord to tell you that you've got a lot to be smiling for. Yes, you've got a lot to be smiling for. You can smile because you're still breathing. You can smile because you made it to church tonight. You can smile because somebody thought that by now you would be history, but you ought to open up your mouth and declare like Miss Sealy, after all that I've been through, thank the Lord, I'm still here. Look at somebody and say, I'm still here. And you can smile because in our text tonight, in Psalm 27, David said, I would have fainted. He said, I would, I would have fainted. I would have lost my mind. I would have gone crazy. I would have lost the faith. I would have waved the white flag of surrender. I would have caught a charge. I would have seriously hurt somebody. I would have given up and 
walked away. I would have believed what the doctor said. I would have given up on my child. I would have walked off the job after I had punched my supervisor in the mouth. I would have packed my bags and moved to Georgia. I would have told some folk what I really thought about them. I would have left my church. I would have told the devil, I give in, you win. I would have fainted. I should have fainted. I could have fainted. I almost fainted. I thought about fainting. Somebody even told me, just go on and faint. But something on the inside kept asking me, how bad do you want it? Something on the inside kept reminding me that I've come too far to give up now. Something on the inside told me that the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but to the one who endures to the end. Something on the inside gave me the strength to believe. I think I'm about to lose my mind up in here. Something on the inside told me you just got to trust God. Something on the inside said you've got to believe and if the truth be told tonight the reason why you and I are in this room today it's not because we deserve to be here no no it's not because we have been that good it's not because we made all of the right decisions it's not because we went to all of the right places did all of the right things and said all of the right words that's not true but again this year many of us live life on the edge preach pastor Chandler if you can't say amen just say ouch many of us we live life on the edge and again this year some of us resorted to some activities that we promised God we would never go back that way ever again again this year we made some decisions some choices and selected a few options options and opportunities that were certainly beneath our maturity levels. I read something today that said people don't realize how important decisions are until they've made the wrong decisions. But many of us have lived long enough to know that good decisions come from experience and experience comes from making bad decisions. Preach, Pastor Chandler and to help your neighbor know that they are not alone if you made some bad decisions and some wrong choices in 2018 that you are not proud of and that you don't like thinking about if you found yourself in 2018 asking yourself what in the world was I thinking and how can somebody as blessed and as brilliant and as beautiful as you succumb to the level of stupidity that you surrendered to if you know what I'm talking about just wave your hand at your preacher and say you is preaching to me tonight pastor but here is a shouting moment there is an honest group in here who can say I made some bad decisions and some awful choices but instead of God giving us what we deserve thank you instead of God punishing us as we should have been punished instead of God erasing us from his plan and excluding us from our destiny and excommunicating us from his will instead of giving us what we deserve. This is what he did. He said, I'll still wake you up in the morning. I'll still supply all of your needs. I'll still keep a roof over your head. I'll still watch over you and your children. I'll still protect you from hurt, harm, and dangers. I'll still make ways for you. I'll still open doors for you. God says, you didn't do right, but I'll still be good. I'll give you grace. I'll give you mercy. I'll show you how much I love you. I'll forgive your sins. I'll wipe your tears away, and I'll give you joy. God says, God says, I don't care how badly you messed up. I'll still look at Jesus and say, Jesus, just give them a little more blood. Yes, just give them a little more blood. He just needs a little more blood. She just needs a little more blood. And you can sit in church tonight with your super religious pontificating attitude and make everybody around you think that holy is your first name. 
name. And righteous is your middle name. But I need to hear from some real saved sinners. Did y'all hear what I said? I said I need to hear from some real saved sinners. I need to hear from some real saved sinners in this room who can be my witness. When I say there were times this year when I was in need of a little more blood, I needed some blood over my sins. I needed some blood over my situation. I needed some blood to cover my mistakes. I needed some blood to wipe out my behaviors. I needed some blood and I stand here tonight as a black boy preacher to share another testimony that I learned this year. I learned, trustee Taylor, that the blood still works. Have I got a witness up in here? Is there anybody in here who can say the blood still works? It was the blood that kept you alive. It was the blood that protected your family. It was the blood that helped you make it even after they fired you. It was the blood that gave you the strength to smile again. It was the blood to help you smile for the camera. It was the blood that dealt with your enemies and your haters. It was the blood that ignited the strength you thought you did not have. Is there anybody in here who knows that the blood, it still works? Maybe that's why Grandma said that there's power. There's power, wonder-working power in the blood. That's why grandma said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. That's why somebody said, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows. Look at somebody and say, I know the blood still works. I got to close. David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And friends, can I tell you that this year for me, it has been one of those years. Have I got a witness in church? This year has had many twists and turns. This year has had its share of hard times, unexpected tests, and some trying moments. Somebody's feeling me today. This year, I have to preach the eulogies for some folk I really loved. This was a hard year. This was this. This There were times this year when I was at a breaking point, and I know that you don't want to hear this, but there were times this year when your pastor almost fainted. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but the reason why you and I made it through 2018 and, and the only way that you and I are going to make it through 2019 is this. We got to believe. Somebody say we got to believe. We got to believe. There were times this year when I felt like a failure. There were times this year when I felt like a fool. There were times this year when I thought I was finished. But some way, somehow, I found enough strength to believe. You got to believe. And I don't know who can relate to what I'm fitting to say, but there were many days in 2018 when I had to believe in spite of what I was hearing. Y'all not talking back to me. There were times when my heart had to focus on God while the devil was talking to my head. Anybody ever had to see beyond what the devil was telling you? And something else I learned this year was that sometimes you have to believe what you believe all by yourself. <laughs> Preach, Pastor Chandler. Matter of fact, what somebody learned this year along with me is this. In order for you to make it to the end of this year, you had to cut off some bad vibes. I, I discovered this year, Mother Brown, that I am allergic to negative people. <laughs> I got some cousins in here. I am allergic to negative people. There are some people, Lady C, who are still waiting for me to respond to a text or return their call and they will be waiting for a long time because I realize that some people are too negative to be next to me. Y'all get that when you get home. It was Gandhi who once said, I will never let people walk through my mind with their dirty feet. 
friends. You don't know what deliverance is all about until you've distanced yourself from the distractions that come from being around negative, mean, dysfunctional, bipolar, irrational psychopaths who call themselves Christians. And I don't care how great you are, you cannot expect positive changes in your life if you hang around negative people. Letting go of negative people doesn't mean that you hate them. It just means that you love yourself. Am I talking to anybody in church? I had to cut off people who were using their nightmares to kill my dreams. And the testimony that we did not hear tonight was from that person who had enough faith to ignore what everybody was telling them. Believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm feeling God moving. I just got an email from heaven. Did you hear what David said? David said, I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I think y'all missed it. Let me say it one more again. He said, I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the in the land of the living cannot tell somebody that I know God has some promises and some rewards and some blessings that he's going to surprise me with when I get to heaven and I look forward to getting to heaven. But friends, please understand that all of God's goodness for your life is not up in heaven preach Pastor Chandler and I don't know about you but there is some stuff that I want to see on earth in the land of the living there is some stuff that I want to see before I die and you ought to wake up your neighbor and say neighbor I'll die when it's time for me to die but right now I want to enjoy the blessings that come with being in the land of the living and I'm not trying to make you shout but I think it's all right to have a praise break right here just look at somebody and say this year this year is almost gone the clock is still ticking but you have a lot to smile for you are still in the land of the living am I talking to anybody in here look at somebody and say you're still in the land of the living and I don't know about you but I want everything that God said I could have while I'm living in the land of the living. I want the peace he said I could have. I want the joy he said I could have. I want the blessings to be following me and chasing me. I want to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I want to be the head and not the tail. All of God's blessings are not just waiting in heaven, but the Bible says, let your will be done on earth. And I don't know, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you need to forget all the reasons why it won't work and believe the only reason why it will, because God said it. Have I got a witness in here? Look at somebody and say, because God said it. Because God said it, I see y'all trying to get out of here. But as I close, that reminds me of a story that I shared maybe years ago. It's a story about Lil James, Lil James, James' son, Lil James. I remember one day James was in my office, and we were eating breakfast together, and everybody was eating breakfast. But little James, he just would not eat. I said, Lil James, you got to eat your breakfast. But little James looked at me and said, Uncle Pat. Pastor, I can't eat because my daddy is going to bring me something to eat. I said, Lord James, your daddy is not here. You got to eat your food. But he looked at me and said, but Uncle Pastor, my daddy said he was going to bring me some breakfast. He put his little head on the table and no parent wants to see a little child cry. Listen to us, Donald Trump. No parent wants to see a little child hungry. He put his head on the table. It was almost Almost like he was crying about 20 minutes 30 minutes had gone by and you know me I was like Lord James you better eat some food but Lord James looked at me and said pastor my daddy said he was gonna bring me some food 30 minutes had gone by there was a knock at my door and James came walking in the office with two McDonald's bags and little James looked up at me and said uncle pastor I told you my daddy was gonna bring me some food 
food. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but you want to end this year just letting everybody else know what your daddy said. I dare you just grab somebody and say, neighbor, my daddy said that weeping may endure for a night, but joy's coming in the morning. Come on, grab somebody and say, neighbor, my daddy said, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Come on, wake up somebody and say, neighbor, my daddy said, my daddy said, he will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My daddy said, lo, I'll be with you always, even until the ends of the world. Can I tell somebody, you got a whole lot to be smiling for. I dare you look at somebody and say, neighbor, I've come too far. I've been through too much. I've cried enough this year. I've walked the floors enough this year. But I'm going to end this year with joy. Wow, what a word. I pray that the sermon blessed your life. It certainly blessed mine. I'm so happy that you joined us today. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a pastor, I'd love to be your pastor. Come and join us. We worship here every Sunday at 7.45 a.m. and at 10.45 a.m. We are located 2301 Cedar Street in the heart of Church Hill. Until next time, I want you to remember that God's word said you should live above only and not beneath. I love you. Have a wonderful week. We invite you to grow with us. Beginning next week, join us for Raining on the Hill, January 10th, 17th, and 24th. January 10th, Pastor Jamal Bryant of the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. There'll be no need for hip replacement. You will not lose your hearing. You will not lose your memory. God will bless your health. January 17th, Dr. Claudette Copeland of New Creation Fellowship Christian Church in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, don't get mad at the preacher. Don't send me an email. Don't, 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 don't put me on Facebook saying that I'm being mean to you. You better hope that this word confronts you while you're in a place of safety. And on January 24th, Bishop Rudolph McKissick of the Bethel Experience in Jacksonville, Florida. Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he try your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Don't miss Raining on the Hill. Attention all leaders and workers. The Leaders and Workers Conference will be held Saturday, January 26, from 9 a.m. to noon. A continental breakfast will be provided. Our guest speaker will be Dr. Patrick J. Walker from the New Macedonian Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. We need all ministry members and leaders to be in attendance. I started out as a prosecutor, and the advantage of starting out as a prosecutor is that you see both sides of the law, and you could help your clients to be more realistic in what they can expect. Three years ago, I filed bankruptcy, and three years later, I'm okay. I can't speak highly enough about Joe Massey and the experience dealing with this law firm. Today's weekly broadcast is brought to you in part by Manning Funeral Home. Walter J. Manning Funeral Home has been providing professional and caring service to the families in our communities since 1941. They provide pre-needed and pre-planning services, as well as cremation and video tributes. Their large chapels, spacious parlors, and caring staff are all a part of a third generation, carrying out a tradition of dignity and respect. Manning Funeral Home, 700 North 25th Street, Richmond, Virginia. We're there when you need us most.